The goal of this game is to rescue your scientist. If your scientist is placed on the opposite sector from where you start with your two ships in your home hangar, then you have to go all the way to pick them up. And once you have them on board, they give you special powers. Easier and faster for you to get that scientist all the way back to your hangar. Let's set up the humanity sector, shall we? First off, we take our two ships and we place them on the home hangar. We also take a Durican mercenary and put it in the mercenary hangar. Then we place our scientist. In the human sector, our scientist goes in the furthest away from the human sector. When we travel, we cannot go through the sun, so we actually have to go around. We cannot go between sector prisms. We can only travel through them. The two dice come in handy because if you decide that you want to take your ship and you want to land on this prism right here, you can move your base move of two, which doesn't require any fuel cards. One, two. And that allows you to then roll this six-sided die, which tells you which sector you're going to. I rolled a four, which is unfortunate because that is the only one that will send this person all the way back home because it is sector four. It's called a smash teleport. Boom! You go back to your starting point. Uh, however, if that was successful, if this person had rolled on the exact landing a one, then they would go to this sector here, which would be quite fortunate because their scientist is in that sector. Then you always have to move off one from the prism. You get to use these little handy things called vortexes, which connect you to other places. They cost one fuel. We have things called caravans. These allow us to travel more quickly as we establish trade routes. If we leave our home hangar with one, two, three, our next ship can then use that as one. One space for a quick track because we own it. These larger quick tracks are actually endurance routes and we place our caravans crossways on them to indicate that we can still use them as a quick track as one. It only takes one fuel to jump over that. However, another ship cannot move past these. Now, other ships may use opponents regular caravan routes at regular speed opponent meets another opponent they can battle if your own ship meets your own ship it's all right they can pass them they just cannot end their turn on the same space that is collusion each player is given six cards to start the die six is rolled to see who goes first and it goes clockwise from the highest here are some of the examples of cards a fuel card the three is the lowest the mid fuel and that would move one of your ship's three spaces. The flex card. This gives you an option. You can use it as five fuel in this case, or you can build any unclaimed route on the board that is five, four, or three spaces. I could place this endurance route that is three spaces. Planet cards. These allow you to warp to these planets. You can also use them in battle. The Durkin card is one that if you have it, you can play your Durkin on any planet of equal value. Well, what is a Durkin exactly? Well, they are mercenaries that can actually deploy to any planet that has the same number on there. So I can take this one, and if I discard this card, I can play any number five planet that is on here. I could go here, I could take it over here. In fact, I will deploy it there. If I had deployed my Durkin on this number five planet, I would actually take out any adjacent route, even though it is an endurance route. On my next move with this Durkin, I can jump at any single planet in any direction. So I can go to this planet, I can jump from this one to this one, or I can jump all the way to this number eight one. In which case, I would take out all of these adjacent caravans. If I don't have a Durkin card, I can always move right from my own hangar, jumping it to the first planet. But the problem with that is it will take out all of my own stuff that I've worked very hard to put together, including the endurance routes. And lastly, the Quantum X cards are anytime cards. Now let's play the Gambit. The Gambit is the way a turn ends. A player has one card face up and then they guess higher or lower for the next card. If they are correct, they can keep going. If they are incorrect, they lose those two cards, but they still gain a random card from the deck. Let's try it. I'm going to say higher than three for the next one. I am correct. Now, I can either choose to keep these two cards because strategically they're important to me, or I can go for it and try to guess this one, will it be higher or lower? In this case, I am going to go for it. And if I lose, I will lose those two cards, as I said, and still get a random card. But if I win, I get to keep all three. I'm going to say lower. Correct. So, all three of these then go into my hand, and we recharge one face up and two face down. Durican may use vortexes as part of their leap. When they fight, they fight with one player card, which always has a battle score, and one random card from the deck. If Durican win a battle, they send a ship or another entity warping somewhere else. To find coordinates, we roll the two die. The die six tells us which sector it's in. In this case, the four tells us that it is not sector five, 
It is actually sector four, so it is the humanity sector, and the six tells us that it is planet number six. 